of Education in the Elgin Central School District. I'd like everybody to please stand for the first witness. Raise your right hand. 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 Raise your
that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. The duties of the position. The duties of the position. State House member on the Board of Education. For the Eldred Central School District, for the Eldred Central School District, for which I've been elected, appointed, 2016-2017 school year. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's this vote right here. It should be in your folder. If you want to just just sign this, you guys now, please. <laughs> okay, we have a couple more, um, couple more approvals on our reorg. So 107, approval that the Board of Education remains a member of the New York State School Boards Association, the Salt County School Boards Association, and the Rural School Boards Association for the 2016-2017 school year. On a motion made by? I'll make that motion. Carol. And seconded by? Okay. By Linda. Do we have any discussion? Doug, I have a couple of questions on this. I emailed them in a little bit earlier today okay. um, so okay. that we can prepare for them. So uh, I just have a question about the uh, cost, the annual cost for membership in each of those organizations. So you have the New York State School Board Association, Sullivan County, and then Rural. New York State School Board Association is based on previous years' budgetary expenditure. In 2015-16, the cost of dues was $6,216. Sullivan County School Board Association is based on student enrollment at one dollar per student. In 1516, the amount was $607. The Rural School Boards Association is $625. So the $6,216 for New York State School Board Association is the cost of our membership or the cost of our membership plus the additional expenses that we, we incur uh, by using the services? It is the cost of dues that are levied based on your expenditures from the previous school year budget. It is not inclusive of any other expenses such as policy review, etc. So the policy review service is not included in our membership? The service is included in the membership, but there was also an expense for a policy review. Unless, perhaps I need to do additional research on that. Your question came in this afternoon, so I would have yeah, to look at that closer. I did notice that there was an expense for a policy review, so I'm wondering if we have a certain amount of policy review or entitled to, unless we exceed that, there's additional expense. We might have asked for something specific in relation. Yes. In relation to that. Yeah, I think we did. Oh, it must have been a workshop. Okay, we had more questions. And that could have been, yes. Yes. The yes. Because that is at Alicard. Right. So workshops or Alicard items, training, like my training, that is also another two hundred bucks. Yes. The convention is a separate charge. And you did ask me also how much the convention would be. Do you want to wait until we get to that? Yeah. Okay. So and then on one of the warrants to this month, uh, warrant number twenty-four, there's also a fund. Uh, an expense to this but for 65 bucks. So it seems like we pay for things as we go. Our membership, if it doesn't include the policy review service, or even if it does, it seems to be a lot of money. So <clears throat> 62, 16 plus whatever the cost is for the convention plus the trade cost of training and all that adds up to you know a bigger number. And I don't know that it's I'm not comfortable spending taxpayers' money on these services from NISBA when they can be gotten from other places. And the reason for that, guys, is because this book uh, is very political. And they're supposed to lobby on the behalf of local school boards and students and parents, and they have not been doing it. They've been actually, in some cases, doing the exact opposite, which is lobbying on behalf of 
corporations that are undisclosed where we don't even fund them. And that's contrary to what we're trying to do. So I don't think that we need to pull on to Newport. The Newport the New Falls School Board uh, recently decided to um, disassociate from NISBA and they found that they can get the services the district provides uh, for a better value for their taxpayers without any of the political nonsense. Okay. My, my only question would be, would be um, I asked Bob to look into the Erie OC's budget, uh, excuse me, policy review service. And the number was in excess of $8,000 for that policy review service. And that's why we that's why we decided to stick with the NISBA service. Now, now, you're telling me that the policy review service is not or we're not sure. I'm not sure that I was led to believe that, that it was part of our business. What I would recommend is if this is something the board wishes to discuss, it should be going forward so that we can do our research and have things in place before we do anything because we do need the policy review service right now. So I would not want to cut this off. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've already budgeted for it, but if this is something the board wants to do, I can start looking at alternatives during the upcoming year. I mean, we get to this time next year and we start budgeting for the subsequent year, we can finalize that discussion. Bonnie, you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, but the policy service keeps us current with changes in policy or new policies. If we ask for a, a review of our entire book, then that would be something separate. But they send us and keep us current. If they send us policy that, that needs to be changed as it relates to law being changed. Exactly. And at this time, you would require a few, I think, on the ISO 4 to come through in the past few years. Once the legislative session ends, there are certain things that districts must do with their policies. I, I don't even know. If we ever had a question, we had a lot. You know, they were right there and right back. I just don't like that they take, you know, some of this money that comes from our taxpayers and use this for the political agenda, which seems to differ from the the needs of our community. It's probably a small amount when you're talking about 6,200 bucks, but I just would like the idea of sending money to some kind of you know, political organization. And I'm, I'm not that familiar with their um, politics in one way or the other. I do know that they claim to represent school districts, but you can't represent a school district like ours and New York City and Buffalo. And I mean, I understand there would be competing interests um, the entire argument about commercial big business in, in schools is far bigger than NISBA. You're probably, in fact, I know that you're right, that, that they err on the side of supporting um, the big business enterprises that, that put the money into the schools. And that's, that's what you want. So they have different policies in too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, um, okay. I, I don't know that they have a political statement. You know, I think they're very generic in that they are for schools. <coughs> but what that means and how it translates maybe where you're having an issue. And I get that, you know, I, I but I don't, I, I do think they're the only game in town. I'm not sure that, I'd love to know more about what you call Yeah, I wish I would have known. I wish yeah. I would have known. I don't want to look until I want to run over. No, yeah, I but I mean, if somebody, I didn't even know that schools didn't, it's like being part of the union when you're a teacher or an administrator, you kind of don't have a choice. There's not another game in town got I'll, I'll choose them instead of them. I don't know that there's there are other policy there. services available in the area of so we did a cursory look at it last year, but nothing that they didn't came up. As I say, my suggestion is I understand your concerns, but we continue for this year and we view our options so we can make a more informed decision. I wouldn't want to not do it and cut cut ourselves off from something that I know we use quite often yep. and less, until we have a replacement class. Okay, I agree. Okay, so then so then um, let's vote. Ryan? Yes. Carol? Yes. Linda? Yes. And I'll say yes. Thank you. 108 is approval to appoint someone as a voting delegate for the Board of Education for the New York State School Boards Association for the 2016-2017 school year. Um, so, 
Ryan, you went to the convention last year, so you were a voting delegate. Um, is that something you're interested in attending I, again? I guess I probably would have to ask a question on 1.10 about the cost, but I guess probably it doesn't matter. Regardless of the cost, I didn't find it to be a worthwhile expenditure for our district since the That's my personal experience, so I would say that I'd probably vote no for somebody to attend it. And unless somebody's planning on going, I'm going to need to have a delegate. Carol, are you going? Um, I'm Solomon County School Board. I will probably go with Sullivan County School Board that's in Buffalo this year. So you could, she could be a voting delegate for others, also if she's already attending. Okay, so let's well, point, Carol. I don't really want to do that, but. Why is that? Because you spend that entire day in that not all the meeting. Are you thought so? <laughs> there are many, many other ways that I can spend a day. Um, I'm, not, I'm a completely um, apolitical person, and that room is full of people who yeah, want to change well, every the to it, and I, 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 I'm, okay. I'm, they're in danger and there in my close presence. Votes, so it's not no, to make there's not any close votes. Okay. It's, it's all political stand-up comedy, and it's not funny. Okay. So I'm sorry, I don't want to be there. Okay. Okay. I find the convention itself very informative because I find out what is going on around the state and the country for good programs, for new programs, for good ideas, and the networking is valuable. Um, we don't so have to have a delegate. So then we're not going to appoint anyone or, to, or approve 108, 109, or 110. Okay. Is that Okay. Okay. Listen, I will reach out to him, and if he's interested, we'll bring we'll be revisit this in August. Okay. Tabling this? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Okay. Field trips took place in the spring, and what we did, what do you have that reported? 
the board packet. Um, we did have an opening day at the Mackenzie Garden that was really fun for the kids. Field days, that was a lot of fun for the kids. We offered a band and group at night so the children could select their instruments for next year. Pre-K and kindergarten screenings went really well. Academic recognition, sixth grade graduation were a big hit. And the summer program was going extremely well. A lot of great pro a lot of great things the kids are doing, uh, bird houses, uh, volcanoes. We have some great volunteers sitting in the audience tonight that are helping us. Thank you for that. Thank you again for the PTA, for the ice cream and social, and the dance party. The children enjoyed that. Upcoming events, we spent some time interviewing for the elementary lead replacement. And the building is, as you can see, we kind of walk through, we're really underway. It's going to be a very different look next month. We have blues, oranges, green, golds. Every hallway is going to be a different color, and it's really going to pop. The theme is we were an elementary school and it should be happy. So happy is our theme. And um, the great coach training, which Scott and I will be attending with our secretaries. And you will be going now, August 8th and August 9th. So we're looking forward to that. I believe that training is to um, help us with efficiency. I know Mrs. Anderson has been setting up a lot of final folders um, for this particular event. So I'm curious to see what that's about. So it should be good. And it's been very busy this summer. And before I close, I'd like to thank Bonnie for everything she's done for me. In the four years that I've been here, um, she's been a wonderful asset and a good friend. Thank you, Bonnie. Any questions for Jenny? Then let's go to our secondary principal report, Mr. Krebs. Okay, well, I appreciate everyone for attending graduation. It was a wonderful day. Got in and out with uh, very few issues whatsoever, other than a little mic issue and things with our diplomas, but it was a nice day, and I thank you all for it, uh, it was, attending. It was a nice day. It was fun very well. It was shorter than usual, but okay. which is good, but it was, it was very nice. Thank you. Um, this summer, too, I've been updating um, our student handbook. There's been some, um, as Mr. DeFore had indicated, some um, updates concerning graduation requirements, mostly in the special education realm. So we're looking at making sure that we have all of those uh, in order for our upcoming seniors for next year, and looking at our calendar for next year, our building-wide trips, concerts, events, and trying to schedule them out so we have everything evenly and um, paced throughout the year. Also in today's um, appointments and authorizations. We will be appointing um, Colleen Koenig. She is moving from a teacher assistant to a special ed teacher this year with us. So Colleen's here with us, so welcome. <laughs> also, you're going to be appointing a part-time TA slash part-time uh, teacher and that is in physical education and uh, TA for our building, and Ryan Jasper is here with us also. <laughs> and we know that Wendy moved into the position as the board clerk, so her position opened up, and we are going to also appoint a uh, typist, senior typist position, and Heather Bonnell is here with us also. So, and um, that's all I have for you this evening. Any, any questions for uh, Mr. Cripps? I, I, I too want to, I too want to reiterate that, oh, excuse me, one, one second, J.D. I want to reiterate that graduation was outstanding. You know, I personally, it was outstanding for everybody, you know, I think Griffin can attest, you know, just, just a great day. Great day, you know. It was a chamber of commerce that day, not a cloudy sky, you know, burnt on the right side of your face. You know, was, was Doug's daughter also graduated. I can't, I can't show that happens. And she's trying to get away. And he's trying to hug her and talk. To her. He's trying to get away. And he's it was really nice. Oh, it's a like dad. I, I made, I made her take the picture though. She, yeah. Then he did a selfie. Yes, that was. It was nice. Well, thank you. That was. 
So just so you know, she knew that was coming. Yes. Yeah. She did. And JJ also has something as part of our uh, I report yeah. also. So sports wise. Yeah. Uh, first off, I also need to thank uh, Bonnie for all her help with my first year in position. Whether it was Facebook uh, posting Sports of the Week, reminding me about Sports of the Week, um, <laughs> reminding me about different meetings I must attend. I mean. Uh, she was a big help, a big help, and with her helping with all that, um, I put her name in and uh, wrote a letter to see if we could win an award from the New York State Athletic Administrative Association, and uh, she won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary Award of Excellence and its quest to increase the quality of athletics in the state of New York. The New York State Athletic Administrative Association wishes to recognize Bonnie Robinson of the Elder School District and appreciation for the extra effort given towards athletics. Well deserved. Thank you, JJ. Okay. Um, I just want to point out that uh, 502. Not there yet. Hold on. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Okay. That brings us to our business office report, Mr. Lewis. Oh, okay. So if you did receive a report in your packet. Just a few things I want to highlight. We did have our building condition survey, and uh, I also passed out some information to all of you on both of our buildings and the building condition survey. I also gave you a priority list for each building, and in bold is the uh, highest priority items. Our buildings are as our architect and engineer has said, our buildings are in good condition, we keep them in good condition. Um, they're aging, there's things that need to be up to be repaired and monitored on a continual basis. My goal is to implement preventative maintenance with our buildings and ground staff um, and do a little bit of restructuring with our transportation department. We're going to be able to bring more skills into our buildings and grounds and maintenance department to see that on your agenda for later and then keep our preventative maintenance on schedule to maintain our buildings so that we don't go into disrepair and have an emergency expense. So you can review this. If you have any questions, of course, you know, if this is a lot of information in the building condition survey, so you can view it. If you have questions, email me. We can revisit it next month if you'd like to know more. Um, I'd be happy to share some additional information with you. I've been prioritizing the summer maintenance work for both buildings, working with Ginny here in the painting and at the high school, local senior high school, to get that building in shape as well. Some remodels of some classrooms. Our fitness center, do a little upgrade in there so the community has uh, a nice fitness center to work out in. I also wrote every in district bus run in May and June. Just because I, I need to be familiar with the area, I wanted to review the transportation and the runs to see how things were, and they, they all went very well. I'm also been working on reviewing and implementing food service upgrades. And that's been uh, received well by the food service staff that are on board and Changes come September. One of the big changes is implementing. We already told you a breakfast program at Junior High School. So, looking forward, I'm just preparing for the audit and SP3 reporting for state aid, um, reviewing our current contracts for any of the pieces about the fitting and proposal, and I'm looking to review all of our insurance. So, it's been a little bit. Any questions approved? Okay, and our district report from 
just a few minutes. Okay, um, this is going to be a story. Um, I'll try to keep it short, but it's going to be a story. A couple of months ago, um, Mr. Benkowski uh, came into my office uh, probably in February or March, I would say, uh, on behalf of the uh, basketball boosters. And um, he shared with me his ongoing efforts to uh, raise money to uh, try and replace the gym floor. Um, I told him at the time that we had no money budgeted to assist with this, but we would do everything we could to support uh, his efforts and the boosters' efforts, and we would do anything we could to facilitate what they were doing. Fast forward three months later, um, and it showed you how quickly things can happen. Um, I was informed that the boosters had the opportunity to buy a refurbished floor. Um, and that specific floor uh, was coming from Penn State University. And uh, at that point, Dave had made contact with me and started sharing a very ambitious, elaborate set of plans to redo our gym. So I'm going to share what I've done, then I'm going to ask Dave to continue with a presentation, and then at the end I'll tell you what I'm asking for. Um, We now have our booster club that has a floor in storage in Philadelphia. They have a very ambitious plan, and the only thing standing in their way of doing this are any possible structural issues we may or may not have in our current gym. Uh, in particular, the thing that brought this whole issue to the forefront is what I will call the crease, the bump, or whatever it is in the middle of the gym floor. The company that gave our um, five-year building survey. We contracted with them out of existing budgeted money to do an engineering study of the gym to find out if what the boosters were proposing was feasible. So I wanted to share with you with what our engineers have uh, discovered, what they've told us, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Bintowski. What I gave you is their report. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to bring it down in a, in a nutshell. Back in 1986, when they put on the back half of the gym, a floor very similar to this used to run left to right in our gymnasium. This floor was removed, and we actually still have original flooring from that gym in the areas under the stage where we store the chairs. The floor was replaced with this, which is nowhere near as thick, and this was glued down onto the concrete slab underneath with no subfloor, no cushion, no nothing. It's been laminated and sanded probably umpteen times over the past 30 years, but the one thing they did do was glue it right over what's known as the expansion joint in the gym. That's where the two buildings connected. Because it was glued over the expansion joint, over the past 30 years with the expansion joint doing what it was designed to do, the floor shifted and it bubbled up. So the engineers came in and looked at three things for us. First and foremost, they pulled samples from all over the gym to make sure there was no underlying asbestos issue. Because we have a building that was added on in 1986 and we have the original building which was there since I believe 1942. The good news is they found no existing asbestos concerns. The second thing they did was bring in a structural engineer, and that's the report that you have in front of you. And this individual looked at two things. The expansion joint and the underlying superstructure of the gym to make sure that the underlying superstructure could support the additional weight of what a hardwood floor would put into that gymnasium. They are satisfied that there is no issue with the floor, that the issue is that the floor was glued to the expansion joint, and that's what caused our problems. They are also satisfied that the underlying structure can support the additional weight. Mr. Binkowski is going to present to you a very ambitious plan with a very ambitious completion schedule. 
that is not going to cost the district any money other than what we would need to do to make our doors in that facility ADA compliant. Ms. Lewis and I are confident that we can do that work in-house under the guidance of our engineers with existing budgeted monies. If for any reason it exceeds what we have budgeted, we would have to go back to the board and have a public hearing to request to access the $40,000 repair reserves that we have. We do not think, and we are very confident, we will not need to do that, but that's a possibility. Based on what the engineer has told us, based on what we've looked at, and we've had our in-house people look at, we can do the work that we need to do, and we can do it with our existing staff, and we can do it under the uh, supervision of our engineers. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Dave and let him give you his overview and his proposal, because this is going to require a board motion, and I would need that tonight for us to proceed. And as I said, it's a very ambitious timeline. I think Dave and I will both speak to that. So, Dave? I'm thinking for your partnership on this. Um, it's been a process that's been going on for a long time. Um, I was wondering if I could get your help one more time to help. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to pass this around. This is a sample of what the flooring looks like. Not exactly, but it is a sample. One point of clarification, the floor is actually Penn State's current floor that they're replacing. So it has not been refurbished ever. This is the original floor that was, that was there. It's in excellent condition. I have photos of it that we'll look at as well. Uh, and this company that I contacted is some of you know, I've been doing a lot of work and homework and looking at things like synthetic floors and cheaper alternatives. Uh, because a hardwood floor is very expensive. A brand new maple floor uh, is expensive. Um, we're fortunate with a great community and we've got a lot of help you know, in, in this area to volunteer time and, and help me as well. I've also heard feedback as well. I've seen the synthetic floor that I went to Kingston to look at. Um, and after talking with our coaches and talking um, with other folks that we want wood. So this is a looking for alternatives, a, a way to get this done. So if you can go to the next slide. Uh, as Bob mentioned, the current floor is part K that's right on top of the concrete and we did explain the expansion joint issue. And that the school, uh, you know, Commission engineers to review the structural integrity of the building and the feasibility of addition, additional weight. One other point of, of note is that this is not just to replace the floor, because the floor, uh, on top of the floor, set the bleachers. And so the bleachers will have to come off. And if they're going to have to come off, and if you've ever been to a game or sat in those stands, you know what that's like. There are not rows, there are no handrails, and the coaches and players normally pull them out with the custodial staff before and after games to make that happen. So there's a lot of things going on there, but ultimately they have to come off. And so in the course of that, I went out and found the best in the business. Uh, this gentleman has done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gems, if not thousands. And, and so I had him come to the school last year. He met with JJ and myself and walked us through the gym and did the measurements and all those things. So he gave us a quote uh, on this floor, uh, on the bleachers to have them refurbished. And the reason that he wanted to be suggested refurbishing them is that the underlying structure, the brand that we purchased way back when, is actually the best brand that there is. The metal that they're using on those bleachers is a better quality of metal than what is being used today. So he looked at it and said, I'd rather use your current metal structure. There's nothing wrong with it. But obviously the plywood that sits underneath the gray plywood needs to go. There are definitely add rows and obviously the P-shaped handrails and whatnot. So, I got a quote from his, him as well, but our current bleachers are not ADA compliant. So if you are in a wheelchair or what have you, not having the handrails, you know, we're grandfathered in, but it's, it's, it is what it is, how it is now. So, do you, are you saying we're replacing the bleachers that are Yes. Okay, thanks. So it's not just the floor. The right. bleachers have to come off anyway, so it's going to look like Boston. Okay. So let me clarify. So because we have to move the bleachers, they are no longer grandfathered, right? They, they do not have to change because we're moving them, or we're just changing because it's the right move. Okay. But I also believe you're That's correct. correct. Once we you do it, we have to comply. Okay. So we privately fundraised uh, fundraise the money to replace both the floor and the bleachers. That's been through a series of fundraisers, merchandise sales, private donations, etc. Which is how much? I'm sorry? How much is that? In total, the bleachers are $43,000. The floor was $13,500. We had $10,000 in the bank for materials. Um, and the labor is being donated by local contractors. So you could just be, uh, That's for the floor and the bleachers. Wow. 
right? Uh, I'll go back one just one before I see real quick if there's any damage. And we already mentioned that stuff. Yeah, go ahead and slide, please. So we're asking for permission to replace the four bleachers at no cost to the district so that we can provide a safe playing and viewing environment for not just our players but also for our community. So go ahead and slide, please. So the plan is to refurbish and upgrade the existing bleachers, to make them ADA compliant and wheelchair accessible, to have the walkable rows with P-shaped handrails, and the bleachers will also include the school colors and our mascot on them. The bleachers will be motorized so that our custodial staff of them. Uh-oh. <laughs> what time is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's our automatically power. Uh, so, uh, could you walk out? Because be done by the time I bring it back up. I have it on my phone, sorry. So, the bleachers are motorized, meaning that the custodial staff, Mr. Gass, whoever has a key can walk over, turn it, and it will open up and close automatically. No manual labor required. One of the things that we also were presented with and said it's worth doing is that the back row of bleachers for the student section will be removable. And so they're gonna put a railing all the way around it so that it will fall off. But they'll be removable so that they can be pushed forward in the gym for plays, band concerts, graduation if need be, et cetera, assemblies, what have you. Yeah, you can go as far as you want. Yeah. So you can make, make a handful kind of thing. So you can have actual risers in there Plus Doug. Uh, Plus <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have an example of what it looks like on in the deck here. You've been to other gyms, I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen they have aisles with the railings in the middle. It's a standard feature. The floor plan is the next piece of this. And again, as I mentioned, we've got we have licensed local contractors who have agreed to volunteer time in exchange for an in-kind donation, essentially. So they give me an invoice, I give them a receipt, so I can go in this time in-kind to the booster club, they get right off out of it. To help with the installation, the sanding, the painting, and the seal for the floor itself. The new floor will be floating. So unlike our current floor, which is anchored, literally anchored to the ground, it will be a floating floor. So if the joint were to move again, that expansion joint, we won't notice it. And there are three possible ways in which this could be done. You could float it with two by four sleepers. There's the bleacher example here. You could do it with one by four sleepers, or you can do it with a layer of plywood. Those are the three options. One by four what? Sleeper. Called a sleeper. <laughs> Just what? They float it up off the floor. Off the oh, oh, oh. So I spoke with a floor consultant via the next slide, please. I spoke with a floor consultant who's done this hundreds of times. Um, he's based in Texas, and he offered us free advice and said, since you're doing it yourself, I'm going to give you this advice for free, and I'm here for it if you need me. He's done repurposed maple gym floors, as I mentioned, half inch plywood with the best route, uh, as opposed to floating it for our situation. If we were to go the other route, we're now talking about the one foot gap that's between the doors and the gym. If you walk into the gyms at the high school, you'll see the woodworking is about a foot thick. By doing it the other way, we're adding on more inches. So by floating it, we're adding on additional height, which means the ramps into the gym will be more steep, which we don't want. So he recommended for our situation that we do this, this route, and it's going to raise the floor from where it is currently to about, about two inches in height. This is the Penn State floor that's been cut, so that's why it's a little rough on the edge there. It is currently sitting on top of packaged plywood. We go to the next piece. More samples on the floor here. They're cut in four by eight sheets. They're sitting on a truck, as, as Mr. Before mentioned, in Pennsylvania. The construction of the floor uses a half, uses a half an inch of close cell foam rolls that you lay out on the floor and then you tape them. And then like plywood, package plywood on top of that, and then you put your floor on top of that and nail the floor to the plywood. So that allows for that gap that I mentioned earlier, so it's not affixed to the actual concrete as the current floor is now. The plan is to call the bleacher man, have him take the bleachers out. It takes them less than half a day to do it. They bring a truck, they take them off, they get them out, and then when he's done, it takes about two weeks, but we're padding our timelines 
but you can have him done in two weeks. And at that point, he comes back and reinstalls them. He does all the work there. We don't touch them. The four hours uh, installation we're anticipating is going to take three weeks. However, Mr. DeFore has made accommodations in case the project runs over so that we have additional time in September. Mr. Krebs and I are confident that we can schedule things accordingly and do it out in January, September, and October if necessary. We still have good weather. Mr. Gass and Mr. Pratchler and Mr. Jasper have use of the fitness center with the phys ed class. They have use of the outdoor fields with phys ed class. We do not see it, but that is our buffer that we feel comfortable we can go without the Board consultant said that it takes him less than two weeks to do this project. The hardest part being taking the boards off of the existing plywood, cutting the nail, or pulling the nails out, and then re reapplying it. The sanding is a one-day job. The painting, the polyurethane that has to sit so that it can actually seal. But we're anticipating starting the week of August 13th. The bleacher man can come in, get the bleachers out, and we can get started. And hopefully, I mean, before Labor Day, it does run a weekend, it runs a weekend, but we're well within the time period that this requires funding. Is that August 14th start date? Is that August 14th? Is that the, uh, the constraint from the future demand? No. Or is that out that's of the that's, that's just, day? yeah, that's us trying to get done before so Labor Day. So, if we needed to move it up? Uh, there's basketball camp in there, and there's also, well, there's, well, have Highland is in there. Highland will be added there in two weeks. Yeah. There's also the basketball camp that's happening. And we played in Monticello last night against a Class B school, and we could use extra time on the floor. So, uh, uh, this is a rendering. we working with my, my designer as well as Mr. Gass on this is not black, by the way, it's a green, it's our elder green uh, in the paint and along the sides of the gym and the back of the gym. The baseline, the side of the sidelines would be green, not, not this dark. So, Taking the yellow jacket we have and blowing it up, along for the half court jump circle in the middle. Um, the paint still exists. The inside color of the wood, the inside of the three point line, as you can see, is a lighter color, a lighter shade. And then we would be leaving in free throw lines for the side baskets so you can practice free throw still. But in most instances, Mr. Gass said that they do not play basketball uh, that way in class. So, uh, we decided to get rid of the red lines that are in there for that reason. Um, so, in short, the form structure has been evaluated and the game suitable to hold the additional weight of the wooden floor. Uh, it's been 100% fundraised and privately financed by the Booster Club. We're anticipating a three week install time. If there is a hold up, I'll be the first one to call Mr. DeFore and let him know if there's any issues that we run into. It's a pretty straightforward process. We just come out and roll the phone. Put your plywood in, you prepare the wood, you lay the wood, you sand the wood, you paint the wood, you steal the wood, we're out. They just come back in once it's dry. So that's my, that's everything I have for you. And um, I said I can help vote yes and approve it because then our kids can really use it. Nice job. Okay, so as I said, it's a story last presentation, but uh, Ruth and I have been working with Dave since the beginning of June to see if we could get it to this point, and we actually finished up with this yesterday at a meeting in my office and uh, got the final engineering report. We had a verbal a week ago, but we got the final engineering report today. So under new business, I'm going to be asking the board for permission to proceed with this plan. Um, we are filing for the permits with SED. The permits are required. Uh, Ruth is working with the engineering firm and they're filing the permits with SED. Uh, if the board approves this plan and gives us permission to go forward, Doug will have a sheet of papers he needs to sign tonight as the board pre president, which is part of the permitting process. And I see absolutely no reason not to proceed with the uh, plan. Uh, I see no pitfalls, I see no drawbacks. Um, it's something that we've been wishing for for many, 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 many years. And I think it will finally come to fruition and I think it will be uh, uh, come to fruition uh, sooner than later. So my recommendation to the board is to uh, 
accept and approve the plan and give us permission to go forward. And that, of course, would be up to you. And both are in agreement that we're going to try people. We're, they're doing it with volunteers. Our people will be doing the ADA compliance and in the door work. Their people will be doing the installation. As I told Dave, my intent is if the board gives approval on a given date, I will turn the gym over to him, lock the doors, um, and uh, we, we discuss certain safety issues when they sand the floors. We need to seal the doors that go out the hallways to make sure the room is properly vented. He's got, he went over the whole list of contractors. Every one of them is a professional. I know what they're doing. Uh, Scott and I have discussed this. Scott was in the meeting yesterday. We do not see it interfering. Uh, you know, best case scenario won't interfere at all. Worst case scenario, it'll be moderately inconvenient, but uh, it will be nothing like when we were doing the building project. Right or wrong, Scott? Okay, so we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't see it as interfering instructionally with the opening of school in September in any way, shape. But what I'm asking is, all of you guys are there. Dave and I, and Ruth, and Scott, yes. Ruth, Scott? Yeah. Dave, we're... Okay. Is there is there is there any way you could just you could just give me a, a week sooner? Just just because I'm really nervous that that we're not done. You, you know what I mean? So no, I, I I understand that. I understand that. I mean, if, if we if we run into problems, that, that's my only concern, Dave. Really, I'll be honest with you. I I, I would prefer. I would prefer us not, you know, having a construction project going on during school. You know what I mean? Yeah, the only, the only thing I need to check on is the availability of the wish command to see when you come out. If okay. he can make it that early. Okay. If he can make it that early, I have no problem doing that. I mean, I, you know, and, and, and listen, I appreciate, you know, the fact that you want to you want to keep the kids practicing through the summer, excuse me, intramuraling through the summer as long as possible. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> Um, but you know that that's that's my only gut concern. To be very honest with you, the conversation I had with Dave was um, Marmalade uses our cafeteria for 90% of their day camp. Um, if I have to go in Monday and let them know they can no longer use the gym, they can use the outdoor fields for their their activities, etc. I'm prepared to do that. Dave knows that I will do what I can on my end turn the facilities over to him at the moment he wants them. Correct? Yeah, I understand what you said. The children are the first. Yes. Yes. So so why don't we why don't we, you know, is it can can we take some public comment on this? Anybody have opinions they want to share? I have an opinion. Please, please. I think it's remarkable, amazing, fantastic, wonderful, and evidence of the uniqueness and power of this community. I cannot believe that this is going to happen for our kids. I cannot believe that it was raised privately. I cannot believe people are donating that kind of time and energy, and I'm ecstatic. I agree. And by the way, Dave, it cannot be easy to, uh, you know, get Penn State's floor. Yeah. <laughs> people who install it for free and to, you know, find the bleacher man. Incredible. And, and all that stuff. And, uh, and then and just make all those arrangements. And I know you put a ton of time into it and a bunch of money, too. So uh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. When it's done. Yeah. Thank my wife when you see her on town. Yeah. <laughs> so, so please don't misunderstand me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel the same way. Yeah. I, I just, I just have just a slight concern about the timeline that we're talking about because, because listen, we can both, you know, it's a very ambitious timeline. It really is. Okay. So, so if we could, if we could just buy another, you know, a few more days in there, I, that would make me more comfortable. Anybody else have anything? Yeah. Um, even if it extends into the school year, which it doesn't seem, it seems like it, you know, could be worked out. I mean, like for most of the couple of first weeks of school, we normally play outside. If it's raining, you know, we do go to fitness center. I don't think that it would necessarily, you know, if we ran into trouble. I completely you know. agree with you. Yeah. And and you're you're absolutely right. You know, I, I would just like okay. for that not me personally. Anybody else? Clark, no opinion? On that. <laughs> <laughs> Three is good. Three is good. Three is good. Three is 
Yes. Uh, I'd have to say even like they're saying if it goes in the school year, I don't know, given the trade off, I don't know how you can argue with a new gym floor for an inconvenience of a week or two. Right. You know? I mean, Again, I, I understand I understand you don't want to interfere with anything to do with school. Well but this is worth it. Okay. Okay. And you know, I've redone my floors at my house and I've polyurethane my floors in my house after sanding them you know my wife took away the nail files she was so disgusting me sanding right so um <coughs> so it it has a pretty strong odor so you know and, and so having kids in the building at the same time you know, like, like, you know if we can avoid it I would, I would prefer to avoid that. So what I would ask is, is, is once the board makes their decision. Oh, no, I was already on the board. No. They need the details today. Yeah. Dave, Dave and I have already spoken about it. We're not going to be polyurethane floors during the school day. We're not going to be sanding. We understand what we need to do. Okay. If, this, if you approve it, leave it to Dave and I to work out the details. All right, I'll show them. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Mr. Jufour or Mr. Binkowski? Dave, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is. Wow. That I'm is, sorry to spring it, but a lot of work has gone into the last couple of weeks to get this where it is. Yeah. So, so I just have very quickly. I want to I want to re restate what I said earlier about graduation. It was a wonderful, a wonderful day for us. Um, again, personally and professionally. So, um, Mr. Krebs, all these people, um, anybody that helped to make that possible, thank you so much. Our maintenance folks that do so much work to set up that front yard. It, it's it, it's a tremendous undertaking, and, and I really appreciate that. So, thank you. So. Um, with that being said, that takes us. Okay. Okay. So, if I can, on 502 on the consent agenda, there is a correction in the spelling. It's Galvin, G A L V I N. I'm requesting that 6.59 be removed from the agenda for this evening. I still have to finalize some of those appointments, so I'm not ready to put them up for vote. And I'm asking that 6.64 be removed. which is the uh, rescinding of the leave of absence for uh, Mrs. Calvin Dubernick. I am still working on details on that, but I will be bringing that back to the table to the officers. Okay. Okay. So then, so then we are looking for public comment, which would be 4.01 to 7.12, less the two motions that Mr. DuPort just talked about. Six point well, is it uh, six point five nine and six point six four. They are coming off our consent agenda. And additionally, um, there was a little typographical error on six two four that needs to include our repair reserve as well. Okay? Did you correct me on that? Okay. Yes. So so that should that should say comma repair reserve period, okay? So, public comment on the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple of questions. Um, 6.17, the um, district's dentists, what service do they provide? They do check up mouthpieces for the football, for the football team, 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 soccer team, whatever. We've had them on retainer, and we're required to have a dentist on retainer. Okay. I just, I... Yeah. Never saw them about the school. And my other question yeah. is 6.45, um, a Medicaid compliance officer? Medicaid and the school, what is what In the is, special ed department, uh, yeah. there are at times students which are eligible for Medicaid reimbursement. Okay. Currently, we do not have any students that are eligible where the sum of money would merit the amount of work involved in claiming the money. 
but the medic we're required to have a Medicaid compliance officer so that we can claim that if we had the need to do it. But it's mostly for special ed. A lot of our high needs kids get supplemental services from the state and the federal government. And the Medicaid gets reimbursed? No, no, we, we get reimbursed from the Medicaid for okay. certain certain services that we provide. Great. Thank you. Any others? Yes, sir. Um, I'd like some clarification on what what's happening with six six three. I understand now you're taking a person from the bus garage to put you on maintenance. No, what's happening is we're vacating the person. We're vacating position in the bus garage because we have a study done years ago that said we were overstaffed there. And we're creating a position in buildings and grants to give us more flexibility in maintaining our facilities and our grants. The position will be done, posted according to civil service rule, and it will be posted in-house as it should be. So anyone in-house who's interested can submit their interest and we will conduct interviews and we will decide who is the best person. No one will be excised. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Oh, I understand. My question is, is that will this person that's being vacated or moved, is it an actual person that's actually moving or is this just a bunch of people? They will actually be moving, but the job specification still allows them, if necessary, to work on motorized vehicles. So okay. should so, we go run into an emergency, Right, because I'm most concerned about bus driver. If this guy is out mowing the lawn and I need a bus driver, which the is more important, bus driver or mowing the lawn? The bus. Uh, yeah. we've been kind of doing this all along. It's kind of formalizing well, the title. Yeah, now. It's, for, it's formalizing the title, and there's like a dollar an hour more to offset the extra work that the individual's going to do. I want to make sure I have enough bus drivers and I'm assuming. No, the, the individual can still drive the bus. And doing everything you're doing to get more money. Ruth, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify. So this is this is an actual person in this position and the job title will not change. The title, the one title will be vacated and a new title will be created. And this person there are potential that two people in the bus garage could be interested in this. And that is why we have to follow civil service law and post the But there's no chance that either individual might lose their job. Absolutely not. Right. Thank you. It's basically, as I said, Franz, Brian, it's codifying what we've been doing. Uh, the individuals in the position now uh, does a lot of our facilities maintenance along with the head person over the summer as is and throughout the school year. So it's giving us the flexibility to do what we're doing. And my thought is that we should have a succession plan because we have two people in this district who will know everything. And if anything should happen or they decide to retire, they walk away with too much knowledge. And we need to have somebody coming up who's going to be trained. Okay, any other comment? Yes, sir. Yeah, I had a quick question actually. Um, for 6.53, I was actually, like, I've been very impressed with the uh, budget. Now, that's for, like, going over the budget and stuff, right? Uh, so, what did you go over the audience? The financial. You're, you're talking about the budget. Which yeah, I, I just looked at that and I recognized the same people who are on here are also on the budget. But they're two separate things. Okay. If you're interested in the budget committee group, which I think is what you're talking yeah. about, Ms. Lewis will be forming that committee again probably around December, January. Oh, okay, yeah, I would definitely be interested in working with that. Yeah, school Yep, for the next few years. Uh, Any other Okay, Any, anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, Paul Mark, Alan Lumberland. I want to make my comments very clear. Uh, Mr. Diaz and Mr. Jasper are both in the room. I know they both be aware. My comments are not personal. I don't know either of them. I know a history here in the Elder Central School District. Since 2011, and the Revenue Reporter, Public Central School, has been trying for it. But they have to find ways to get money to do some of the things that need to be done. This is one thing that we couldn't do out of our own country. A year and a half ago, we debated whether or not we could fund a pre k program. The community members happened to be there and stood up and said, they would go to the public with this because it was something that really needed to be done. 
Then we got into the issue of whether or not we have a physics teacher, a certified teacher, physics in the school district. We finally went and got a part-time physics teacher. I don't know how that's working out. We need a math teacher. We hired a, a retired math teacher on step one. And Eldred once again has been trying to kill it. Okay. Um, what we project out to the public and out to potential students is if we cannot fill, fill our physics program, fulfill our math program, how are we going to attract those students? Those students are going to look at Eldred and they're going to say, well, they have a part-time physics teacher there. They have a retired math teacher there. That's not going to attract students. So the problem I'm having with this 6.62 is we can't do all these other things. And you're probably, since there's no repeat retirement for a year, we're probably looking at raising the tax levy and having it to a, a super majority this spring. And in addition to that, we need to attract students to the quality educational program. Why is it we struggle with these economic issues when we can take and create a part-time phys ed position because the athletic coordinator is looking to have some extra time during the day and then we can also add 70 percent of the teaching assistant and how can we find that money if we can't find money for the things that a lot of people would think are more important so i'm just asking the board to consider what the perception is that goes out to prospective students and to the taxpayers in this country before they make a decision on that. i apologize to you both like i said it's not the first Anyone else? Is there anything to add? Okay. So then we'll need a motion to accept the consent agenda. Again, 401 to 702, 712, excuse me, uh, less 6.59 and 6.64 and 624 as amended. Okay, to include the repair reserve. Okay. I'm going to get motion. Second. A second. I'll second. Any discussion? I have some questions, and I apologize. Just that on the reorganization meeting, there's just a lot of stuff in the consent agenda, so I, mm -hmm. I do have a number of questions for clarification. I tried to email you guys most of the stuff as a heads up, but I did find some more stuff as I continue to read. So this is one of the things that I didn't catch on my original list of questions, and I apologize. If you don't have the answers, you know, I'll, I'll have to deal with it. But um, on 4.04, uh, which is the approval of the multi-fund warrant uh, for number 24, number 25, and number 26. I don't remember specifically which warrants these are on, but on legal services, there's a payment for $2,200 to Hogan and Sarzynski. I just wanted to ask, I asked the last time as well, we do pay a retainer to Hogan and Sarzynski, but then we, we seem to have these, um, these, these charges almost continually. So why is the spending thousands of dollars on legal fees when we, we pay a retainer to the law firm as well. We pay a retainer to the Ryan, but at times, and this year was one of those times, we exceed that retainer. It doesn't exceed what we have budgeted, but it exceeds the retainer. And this year, Ruth was looking to increase the retainer for those eventualities. We have a couple of things going on, uh, the ongoing legal matters, which do incur costs. Okay? So what you're seeing on the warrant at this time of the year, I think we received notice from them the second or third week in May that we had used up the retainer at that point. So it got us through almost the full school year. So the retainer runs through May 31st? Well, the retainer runs through June 3rd. We used it up by the second or third week in May, and that's the point I told Ruth to look into uh, increasing the amount of the retainer. But we're not exceeding the budget, the budget that we have for legal services. That actually answers one of my other questions, so I want to answer one. But um, another thing on uh, one of the warrants is um, payments to the G. Davis uh, for the contract, the uh, contract for transportation. And uh, I don't remember uh, what the expectation was that was put forward for what this is going to cost us to create this contract with G. Davis. But you know, just to, to go through some of the numbers here, in April we paid them two thousand dollars. In May 
eleven thousand dollars in June, another thousand. So is this in line with what we expected? That contract. I anticipate it would be one hundred fifty thousand dollars for transportation of our athletic and some of our academic field trips. Yes. There's a lot of field trips in in, in, in Maine. So that's what that money would be. And, and is that something? I mean, that's related to the idea that we we don't have enough right. drivers. Right. And we can't seem to recruit them. Did I see somewhere that we were going to talk about that tonight? I don't we're going to talk about the recruitment of our property. That's a problem in the municipality as well. I thought I saw that on the driver. Am I crazy? It is my plan to do another bit also on the road and try to get some of the drivers that we have to do that because, and it should be done proactively. Minnesota Valley does it proactively and they have a full team and they have a contract for their athletic trips. And I am going to do it again, and this time I'm not going to wait, I'm going to do it ahead of time so we're going to follow the procurement process. We did that as an emergency in January. We knew we were not going to take the transit. Is the goal long term to not have to do this? I would game? love not to have to do this if I could do truth drivers. So look, we've been talking about a lot of incentives. Uh, for drivers in line of what some of the commercial companies do. Mm -hmm. We have not finalized it yet, but we, we've been talking about it for the last couple of months. We've been talking with the Drivers Association, the Transportation Coordinator. So what we will probably do is come back in August with a proposal as to what we'd like to try. Um, I don't know what the legalities of a public entity offering incentives are, but we've got to look at it. Uh, Especially in the spring, we always have issues with the drivers. You know, the drivers are running the routes, they're, they're doing most of the academic trips, but the athletics are hard, and it's just so many drivers that we have. And the, the contract is limited to extracurricular run, right? Yeah, because the contract will not allow for G Davis to transport normal food. No, no, no. And it's only when needed. It's not like we're guaranteeing them X number, it's only when their services are needed. Davis is from They were the least expensive when I sent out the books. They were the least expensive. And finally, on the warrants, the um, payment for Epic for $1,801. Is that for the um, assessment that we have in our folder? On that. The assessment was already paid for. First of all, when you see it coming out of the general fund, that's being charged off to a Title I grant. So that's not district revenue that's being used for that. Okay. Um, we are now in the transition phase with them, where they're now recruiting to the coordinator, and the entire expense for this project is being budgeted into our Title I grant for the 16-17 uh, school year. I changed that grant back in, what was it, November, where I allocated up to, I think, $15,000 of Title I money for, for the assessment and for all the follow-up and subsequent work. So when you see anything from that, it is ultimately being charged for the Title I, but it has to go on our, our long stuff. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm sorry, on 6.05, uh, which is uh, the approval that the superintendent is authorized to employ personnel on a temporary per diem or substitute basis and to set the appropriate wages for such personnel. Um, I think I asked this last year, and the question I asked was, is there a time frame associated with this? In other words, if you were to hire somebody, you know, for like a, uh, a longer term substitute, beyond a month or a couple of months or whatever, can you do that under this, or does that require the No, it had, uh, any long term position's got to ultimately come back for more point. But what is, the, what is the time frame if you could have a, a sub filling in for a teacher for how long? Well, there's different classes. If it's a cleaning sub, that person works as a sub under our existing sub rates for the duration of time because their contract makes no provision for a special rate or a job rate for subs. What kind of sub? If it's a cleaner, okay. Okay, or if it's one of my CSEA employees because this is very much contractual. If it's a teacher and it's going to last more than 30 days, then they're made a permanent leave replacement. And the teaching contract requires two things, okay? If somebody goes out sick and we have a regular substitute teacher in and it's more than 30 days, then at the 31st day, no, I'm sorry, it's 20 days. And I don't have a contract. 
On the 21st day, it goes retroactive to the step one because that person is considered a temporary employee under the terms of the contract. If we know in advance, and by that, um, I have a, a teacher who's going out for some surgery and I'll quote that. We know this individual is going out. Whomever we appoint will be appointed at step one of the teacher's contract because that's what the contract stipulates when that appointment comes. What this allows me to do is appoint people to these positions in between board meetings so we have to call them. And are they ultimately voted on by the board or does it not require? If, the con if it's a contractual, the teachers are voted on, the CSEA usually not because we're committed to use subs for a, an extended period of time. Okay. That makes sense. Does, does that make Thank sense? Thank you for clarifying yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. No, I'm sorry, Doug, I, I'm not done with questions. I apologize. There's one thing that's not on the agenda that was on last year's um, uh, reorg meeting, and it was the appointment of Cooper and Arias as the audit uh, firm. Did we already do that last month? Or no, their contract expires at the end of the 2015-16 school year. That's one of the proposals I in the 2015-16 school year. They can conduct an audit to the end for this past school year. They right. will be doing our audit because their contract is to do that. So I need to do a new RFP to hire a new firm for the future. It could very well be Cooper Aries. It could very well be. Yeah, but they have to... They have to and you will vote on that once the RFP is awarded. Um, and this is, this is a question I had sent in and we said we discussed it tonight because I think it might be a longer answer. So 6.25. <laughs> what 6.25 is asking us to do is to approve all existing Board of Education policies and goals and to advise the superintendent to make the policies available and so forth. But it's a big catch-all and it's like it's kind of like you're going to take every policy and um, goal and just kind of you know revalidate it without really discussing it. So I wonder if that's required legally to be part of the reorg meeting or if there's a way that we can avoid you know just revalidating things without fully discussing. It seems like it'd be better if you were gonna um, if you're gonna revalidate the goal or policy to discuss each policy individually at the board. Does that make sense? On a check with other districts today to see what other districts do. Most at the reorganization meeting roll everything over. So all existing policies have currently been validated. Now some of your policies if you ever go through the uh, board policy book online some of them were passed in 1990 and have not been touched since. There's a reason they haven't been touched since, because they haven't needed to be touched since. This automatically rolls those type of policies over. The bigger policies that we must review each year are usually voted on separately. So it's rolling over your existing policies until you change those policies. If without approving them tonight, they will expire. But what would happen if we didn't reapprove them this year? I honestly don't know. I've never been asked that question. I'm answering the question you posed in the email today, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I, I didn't ask that. All right. I have a tiny little question on that one also. Um, trivial, but one on the website and one on the district office. Do we not need one at the elementary school and I thought we need one somewhere in the town that can use the library? Well, do you know the answer to that? Not anymore. It's both on the website and the other office. I have an issue um, about 628 approving August and September in this room. Now this is, you're stuck here for the summer, I told you that. Because what about the library? Too? What about the library upstairs over there? Isn't it air conditioned? Uh, I go there. The library is air conditioned. <laughs> Can we go there? Are you done yet? Much more comfortable study to uh, the computer lab is... Yeah, but they, they, they can hold the board. Uh, yeah. Okay. I have a little bit of time. Can we change that? We'll... We try to do this to balance the number of meetings in between areas. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it is my fault. Yes, I didn't think. If you want to move August, we can do it in the mm -hmm. library. That's up to you. But I'm just telling you, I can't use room 203 because we're refurbishing that room, so we have to do it in the library. So if we did it in the library for August and September, then then GRM can have it January and February. <laughs> no, because that's no. So? Well, um, I don't care how I don't care how we balance it. That's not something that I. 
I just I just know that we can't do this. Yeah, as I recall, the, the request was from some of the folks who live in London. We have half our meetings here. I don't think we go up through like the temperature, yeah, you know. and so that's a reasonable reason to. All right, so I'll change. We'll change that to the, the senior okay. senior high school, and leave it, leave it just leave it that. I would not suggest changing anything else at this time. Just change those two. We'll do them in the library. The high school. We can man the, we can man the elevator. We'll, we can let out the music. We'll man the elevator for um, so people can get to the second floor. Right? Yeah. Makes sense? Whatever you want to support. So, I'm sorry, 6.32. Uh, the retainer for Hogan and Sarzinski last year was $8,100. This year it's 22000 and now I understand the difference is that we have to spend additional money above me on the retainer, but it's still the twenty-two thousand is within the budget amount. Yes. Is that the full budget amount? No, I. I don't know. I have to check. I have to check on that. It doesn't matter how we pay it, right? Financially, I mean, it's, if we're going to end up paying the twenty-two thousand, whether you pay eighty-one hundred up front and then fees later on, is it a big difference or no difference at all? I, I don't. I can't answer that. They don't, don't charge us that. more if we no, go over. No, we don't use it. They don't charge us. No, they don't charge us. But they also don't charge us at a higher rate no. just because we didn't plan ahead. And no, 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 I didn't think so. It's actual rate that we already have in their brain. Okay. All right, finally, um, 6.51 is the contract extension for the security firm that we utilize. And um, <clears throat> I don't mean anything by this question. I just wanted to ask the board because I remember being a member of the public when this was first implemented when we hired the security firm, which we did not previously have. And I guess the question is, um, well, first of all, what is the total cost? In 1415, it was $68,300. In 1516, it was $68,400. So it's been fairly steady. And That's that two is one bought in each building during the school year. Plus, they Extra them. activities, basketball games, football games, uh, everything. Board of Ed, plays, the, the budget vote, budget vote, things. graduation. And again, it's budgeted. And mm -hmm. we have that in the budget. We don't have a problem with that. That's a new expense for us, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. in this day and age, it's, 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 it's been in the budget for the past uh, four years. Four years. It's four years. Much longer than that. Because we had we started with one guard at the high school okay. about five years ago. We added the second guard down here this September after New Hampshire. So that's that's what I recall. That was it. Came out of the graduation. Yes. And I guess the question is, you know, is that something that we should be doing? In other words, I, I get that everybody wanted to do their very best to protect their schools, obviously, but is it something that we want to continue to do as a security guard at the elementary school? Uh, well, my answer is unequivocally yes. Unequivocally. Yes. Can, I, can I ask a question related to that? Is he busy? Every minute. He's in, in what? In, can you give us a few examples? Work. He does building checks throughout the day. Okay. He helps out for two hours every day in the cafeteria. Okay. He helps out with Bus duty, morning, a.m. and p.m. Traffic. Traffic. Oh, yeah, I've seen that myself. Yeah. Um, instrumental in circulating throughout the building. He's the first person when the principal comes to the door. Mm -hmm. He offers anything suspicious. He's right there. Um, I think he's got a great asset. He's, he's got, got a great rapport with the kids. With the children? Yeah. yeah. And the parents. I see. A lot of the kids go to him before they go to anyone else. Really? He's a member of the community, which is good. He knows all of these families. Um, yeah, absolutely, I, I would never recommend discontinuing. I feel good about the security level at, at our schools and in this day and age. I, I hope we never need them. But it's much less than people paying money in the house. You have to pay that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank that. So I'm sorry, I didn't realize that we go into the sevens. So I do have a couple more questions. On the, we have two policies we're doing first readings, and uh, I just wanted to clarify the changes. It's 703. So the class rankings were making a change to AP classes, and I guess I don't really remember what it was. So. Uh, never had AP classes at the high school. Uh, and music theory was one that we've had for the past two years, and the students never got a um, differential for a weighting for their AP class. So after considerable discussion with other schools and what they did, we are revising our um, <coughs> ranking. Oh, it's 1.05? Whatever the number is, is, is what we put in, which was similar to what I believe the college office is doing. And the uh, code of conduct is being amended for the dress code to 
looks like remove the rule about not wearing hats with this. And um, so this is the first reading. Are we looking for public comment on that? Or do you guys have any thoughts on it? I have a thought on it. My well, let me explain why we're removing it. First of all, that has been a uh, something the students have been requesting. Second of all, it's become an unenforceable policy. And by that I mean, in order for something to be done, everyone has to uniformly enforce it. And this is kind of what happened with the cell phone there. Um, some people didn't want cell phones in the building, some people did want cell phones, some people enforced the policy, some people didn't enforce the policy, and ultimately it came that they expected uh, Scott, Jenny, and I to be the only ones to enforce the policy because no one, no one wanted to be the bad person to tell someone to take a hat off. So we sent several emails out calling the staff and got very little uh, communication one way or the other from But we knew the policy wasn't being enforced. So we're going towards what the cell phone policy is. Students can wear their hats in the common areas. It's up to each individual teacher's discretion whether or not the student wears hats in their room. And we did that with the cell phone policy two and a half years ago and it worked out very well. Now, some, not everyone agrees with it, Brian, but unfortunately, uh, it would have to be a uniform application of the policy for it to be effective, and there has not been. And, and I think we choose our battles, and I'm not sure, you know, it, it, goes, it goes way back to when old men removed hats as a, a sign of respect. And so girls wearing hats was no big deal. Well, now, that's not enforceable either, and, it, you know, one, one and not the other. And it's not the sign of respect that it used to be, whether we might still wish that it was, but there are very many men now wearing hats in restaurants and hats in church and hats in places, so it, it's at the, table. at the dinner table. So I think it's not what it was, and I, I think it goes the way of the typewriter, you know? Do, do we want to teach that it should be that way? But maybe, I'm not cool, so I don't think it's cool to wear a hat. <laughs> but um, don't we, I, I get that we're going in that direction, but what do we want to teach? I don't think we can, any more than we can teach cursive handwriting anymore and insist that, you know, you fail or, or don't fail by how you write, handwrite. It's not the world we live in today. Are we going to choose that as our battle? No. I'd rather choose a whole lot of other things than worry about hats. And it's okay to teach so you can teach teacher. Yeah, yeah. individual. Yeah. The teacher has the discretion. Mm -hmm. right. so, you guys feel comfortable with that, right? All right, if I'm the only one who's, you know, not fully happy with it, it's not that Just so you know, I personally agree with you. And I do too. But I won't be the only person in the building telling a kid to take a hat. Well, I get so. All right, so let me ask the, the bigger guy. Yes. No, I got you. Everybody has their own opinion about it, I think. It's what happens, and I kind of understand about what you believe is right, what kids believe is right. What, so it's a balancing act. And I think, like Mr. Report said, we want it to be consistent with what the students were expecting uh, for them to happen and then for individual teachers to have the right to control their classroom the way they see fit. And I think a lot of times is that you would have two teachers next to each other, one would allow cell phones, the other wouldn't. One didn't allow hats, the other kind of did. So we were kind of putting it back to, well, if this is what you feel, just like whether homework can be handed in a day late or homework needs to be handed in on time. It was one of those type of things that we really thought. And I had had this conversation last year a number of times with the staff throughout the year, and one of the things that helped me out on making that decision is that that hat line was in the board policy, so we had to come back to the board to remove that to have a conversation with the staff again. Okay. And it hasn't been in there all the time. It's only been in there about six years. Yeah. It wasn't in there prior to. And I'll be honest with you, it was a specific teacher that led the charge at that time to have it put in. And not everybody saw it that way, but there was enough support at that time to do it. It's not that support now. We need the teachers to be teachers. They need to be running their buildings. I have a district to run. It's it should be the teacher's decision at this point. I got you. All right, cool. Final question, sorry. Uh, 710 is the uh, agreement between our district and the town of Lumberland for the bus garage lease mm -hmm. and 3600 per month. Is that the same as last year? They've been, they've been really good with us. Right, I'm sorry for all the questions, and I appreciate oh, no, it. Right. I I, you, got, you got the other answers I sent you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. 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 Okay.
I'm not going back to August, no. I have a question about 614. It's just a clarification, really. It, it points you as the uh, Section 504 responsible person. Is that for the elementary and the high school? It's for the district. It's all for the district. So if there was a 504 request at the elementary, you would chair the committee? No, I do not. Usually no. it's chaired by, but if there's any concerns that come up through 504, yes. then that comes through me, and then I have a conversation about it. Oh, I see. OK, so it's more like a like a second level of if, if, okay. if needed. Our CSE chairperson is not uh, completing the district. <coughs> yes. Right. So that's so why you've got separate. Private that's why yeah. I have Scott as the but, but who chairs the meetings for the private? The CSE chair. Okay, yes. that's all. I okay. Any other questions? I have a couple of tiny ones. Um, 629. The um, the meal policy have the prices gone up or have they changed? That is uh, related to the greater reasons for your staff. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the We have not, but we do have to look at that according to New York State. There is a school that I have to complete that may come out and say, yes, we have to So I will come back to that in August. Okay. Um, uh, 6.52, Dr. Gill. Okay. To be nosy, who is that? I'm sorry? Just to be nosy, who is that? He's person. He's our district physician. Where is he from? He's from Monticello. Okay. He's actually Monticello's district physician, too, I think. Uh, we're very busy. And what is that job? Up the top of your head. Just the physicals. A lot more. He does all of the physicals, the athletic physicals, which we don't go to the doctor for the physical school. Oh, okay. And uh, he's the only one who responds to the RFP. He wins. We're not happy with your personal. There's no add on motion, is that? We have two more people voting on this. Are they part of the consent agenda? No, no. no. They're going to be at the LB separate. So there's nothing on the consent agenda except for the Remove it. So now, for as amended, are this uh, the uh, is that a, a change in our architecture? Yeah, we put out a we come back to the board and told them we put out an audit and said, okay. This is the company that uh, we were the, board okay. the, uh, the bid to, and they were selling exclusively and what the bid to do the five year. Uh, building condition survey. We were very happy with what they brought back to us. So we used them for the gym study, and this is allowing us, as we need engineering services, to use them on an hourly basis. Very good. If there was anything more a large capital project, we could have a large So far, they've been very responsive. Okay. I'm sorry, I just wanted to clarify one of the answers that you gave me over email today. Um, 712 is a new contract for the Center for Discovery, and it's for um, it is for assistive technology. It's and not for assistive technology. Okay. It's for assistive technology evaluations. Part of the special education law requires that if a if a student will benefit, if a special education student will benefit from certain device technology device, that we're we're required by law to provide it if it's mandated as necessary to a child's education. So we have to have an assistive technology evaluation for a child when it's requested. I don't think we do it very often and we what don't find is, that it's we, necessary. We requested it one from for the first time from this year, this contract Texas in this coming year. It's a service we've never used from them before. Oh, okay. So it's basically here's the rates we're going to charge you if you need this again. And that's got to be approved by the Committee on Special Education. Did we previously use a different vendor for this? No. No, we actually, this is, always use the center, but the center has become far more legal oriented. Okay. In, in, recently, so they want a contract for it. And we have a lot of uh, various contracts that uh, we have. Uh, we have contracts for physical therapists. And sometimes we don't use them the whole year, but we need them on, uh, on, on our contract so we have an approved hourly rate in case the services are required for industry. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Then let's go. Um, fine line. So, Brian? Yes. Carol? Yes. Linda? Yes. 
then down the door is absent, I'll say yes. So I would like to be the first to welcome uh, Heather, Colleen, in the different capacity, and Ron. Wendy, it's not over yet. Yeah. 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 Chances are high, Janice. It's not over. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, Wendy didn't hear about the orientation, did she? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that takes us to old business. Any old business? Oh, pardon me. Who's got that piece of that's still floating around? Yeah, it's in front of you. Oh, the other one. The 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 one. We need to approve to appoint the superintendent as the chief emergency office of the district for the 2016-2017 school year. Can I have someone make that motion, please? Office. I'll make that motion. Did I, did I not say office? Yeah. office. Sorry, officer. We have to have a chief emergency it's officer. It's required now in the state safety office. Okay. Yeah, lucky you. Okay, so we have Linda. Yes. Making the motion and Brian second it. Any yes. discussion? Let's vote then. Brian? Yes. Carol? Yes. Linda? Yes. And I'll say congratulations. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. And then we have uh, 714 approval on the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Joanne Burroughs Nathan Wood as a re. Oh my goodness, excuse me. As a lead replacement for Cherish Galvin Lieberman, effective September 1, 2016, on step one of the current teacher's contract. Can I have a motion to accept this? And a second? Second. Okay, go. go. The discussion that I would have, the, the clarification that I would have is this is a lead replacement. Okay? So in the event that uh, Mrs. Galvin Liefernick were to return, then this person knows that they are without employment. And Cherish is coming home tomorrow? Cherish is coming home tomorrow. No commitment beyond what we need. Right. No commitment beyond what we need as a lead replacement. Okay? Yes. Any other? No, thank you. Good. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so, you know, any lead replacement that we appoint is appointed under those terms and conditions. The appointment ends when the individual returns. There's no barrier to replacing them. Ready to come back to work. Come tomorrow. Bring that if, 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 if Cherish returned to work on September 1st, this individual would not start. Okay. So then let's, um, oh, can I have, wait, Linda made the motion? And Carol seconded it. So then we need to vote. Brian? Yes. Carol? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we're done with our consent. Um, all business, anything? I know we have goals to revisit um, at 9 o'clock. I just. Yeah, well, we're going to. I have a quick question. No. Okay. okay. If everybody's hot, they want to leave. I don't really. I need your answer, not there. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm ready business. Any new business, folks? I have old business. business. You have. I have old business. You have old business. Um, how about we save it for public comment? Sure. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, any new business, folks? I don't know how to word this, I don't know if it's the appropriate time, but I would like to discuss a specific personnel issue in executive session. Does okay. that wait for after public comment, or do we we'll make have that motion? After ready? public comment, we'll request an executive session okay. for a specific personnel. So for new business, do you have that written somewhere? 
Ronnie Hill. You have some written? You're the best. Okay, so for new business, we need a motion to approve upon the recommendation of the superintendent to accept and approve booster club plan and proposal to refurbish the gym floor and bleachers. Oh, excuse me, junior, senior, high school gym floor and bleachers. So moved. And so second it. Any questions, comments, concerns further than what we've already gone through? No, I just another opportunity to say thank you for this obviously a tremendous amount of work uh, for you and the whole booster club and everybody who's going to be donating their time. It's really fantastic. Like Gerald said, it's one of those things that only happens in a small town. It's a proud to be part of this town. Yes, no, I know, I know we have. Okay, so. So, um, so then Brian made the motion and uh, Harold second and we just had our conversation um, again I'm going to going to trust Mr. Dufour and Mr. Pinkowski with the uh, you know just approve the advisor and we'll handle the rest. I got that, that one clear. Um, so I'll just, Brian? Yes. Carol? Yes. Uh, Linda? Yes. Comment was absent and I'll say thank you. Okay, so that leads us to public comment. Me. That's um, you. Did we have an answer to Mrs. Uh, uh, about the teacher's contract, uh, getting the yearly totals for what they're going to cost each year in the total, which she was asking last month. I'm sorry, I didn't write down the question. I apologize. Mrs. Foster asked you what the con teacher's contract was going to cost us in year one through five in the total. It is being worked on in the business office currently. The, uh, the clerk was not in. Well, it's not ready yet. No, it's not ready yet. It will be ready next month. That's fine. Next question. What is the district doing to replace uh, the math teacher that Mr. Clark question? That's a... It wasn't a full-time math position. It was a part-time math position. The individual is also a business teacher. I understand. And that, those duties for business teacher were assigned to a, another certified teacher in the building who was a, a certified business teacher. And the math classes have been assigned to existing math teachers. Okay, so we're not handling that long-term stuff again? No, we're not. No. Um, and my next question is, I understand you probably can't tell me too much, but how does the bullying issue affect our budget? Okay, um, I can't comment on that because it's an ongoing legal matter. I can say two things, okay? First and foremost, what was reported in the paper is not accurate, but that's also not surprising. Um, the appellate court made two decisions. The first decision was never reported in the paper. The first decision the appellate court made was, and it's going to be a New York State landmark decision and ultimately be in the law books, that there is no provision under DASA to seek damages. But that was never reported in the paper. The second decision that the appellate court made was that the lower court judge erred and should not have dismissed out of hand the allegations of negligent supervision and should have allowed it to go to a jury trial. What the decisions mean, Franz, is at some point there'll be a jury trial. There's been no awards. There was no ruling for the family. They ruled on what the lower court had decided. The lower court in 2015 dismissed all charges out of hand. Right, I understand. I'm as far as cost to the district, this is being handled by our insurance company. Okay, so that's, it's not a direct hit to our bottom No, the insurance line, company's whatever. handling it. Obviously, you have legal costs up to a certain point if there is. Well, the, the insurance company is providing the attorney. 
Republican. Okay, they're yeah. using our attorneys, but the insurance company is paying for it. And it's any type of settlement that may appear would not be. It, that's all be handled by the insurance company. Yeah. And in reference to that, the, I would like to know um, from last uh, month you uh, gave us a list of uh, fall coaches. Um, in reference to the bullying thing, are all of our coaches, I'm going to use the word certified, they meet all of the yes. necessary requirements either yes. so that we don't open ourselves up to any type of liability that having a coach who is not completely certified. They're, they're all certified? Limit. Yeah, they take all the workshops just like every teacher does. Everyone meets everything. All T's are crossed and all dot I's are dotted. If they're, if they're not before the season starts, they're given a certain amount of time to complete it. If they do not complete the requirements, right, they don't coach. The paperwork says there's time limits of three, five years. Yeah, there's different layers. That, that's for, uh, for different coaching classes. Right. Um, they get five years from their high Initial, as a, as your a, initial license. Yeah, as a, yeah, for your initial license and from the first day you're hired as a paid. So all of our coaches are in that. So there, there was a time where that didn't apply, but not now. Okay. We retain records. Yes, JJ keeps the records in conjunction with Bonnie, and then now it'll be in conjunction with Wendy. That's all reviewed several times during the actually at the beginning of each season it's reviewed when the individual puts in their paper. Like I'll have I'll have my fall coaches meeting on Thursday for and I give out all dates for the CPR updates, the first aid updates. And what classes? So all I'm trying to do is cover everybody. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I appreciate it. I, appreciate I do it. not want it. And the, the, gossip. So the final question I have is: is that I'm on Mrs. Lewis's budget committee, and I've been doing some research regarding. Uh, I'm assuming we're preparing to do some type of leasing of buses for the upcoming budget season. Uh, you wanted to make these meetings a little bit earlier. I assume you're going to invite me in September, or October. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to know, has, has the school district started on any? I have started leasing. Okay. And you started talking about leasing either partial fleet or full fleet? Both options. Yes. So. And, and in comparison to per outright purchasing and uh, gathering all the information so that when I do the presentation, right. I've, been doing, I've been doing research and some of these numbers are quite startling and lucrative and for the district and you can do a whole fleet yes. of our 15 buses quite quickly and quite easily. Yes. Yeah, that only applies to the equipment, not the personnel. Yeah. Right. Just the bus. It is just the bus I'm trying to get the place. I have a follow-up question to the question that Ron asked about the math position. So last year we hired two math teachers at the same time. One was a math business, one was a math business. The math business teacher is no longer here. We have a person filling in for the rest of the year. What you're saying is that the business responsibilities are transferred to an existing employee in the math business responsibility. So that position is not being filled. That second math position won't be filled this year. The second math position, this math business position was not being filled. We left the position in the budget. And when we moved Ms. Kane from a teaching assistant to a teacher, the difference in the cost between her current position and the new position offset by that position that was already in the budget. When we hired Mr. Jasper, the reason that it is a hybrid position was to keep it within the confines of the existing budget. So the position was repurposed to make sure that we had adequate supervision in the Yes, sir. For purposes of education for the board and the business manager, as the board negotiator of the teacher's contract for many years, I was always given a spreadsheet at year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. That would cover schedule A is just teaching responsibility. So teacher one had a certain salary, they had a certain amount of pay for their tenure, a certain amount of pay for the number of credits they had, certain amount of pay for their longevity. That was all covered in Schedule A. It does not pertain to Schedule B, which is extracurricular, or Schedule C, which is the athletic. Those things came extra. But as a negotiator, I would have been able to tell you what it cost in year one, what it cost in year three, 
what it cost in the year before, and cost the whole thing. Um, and I, I think that's the information that the board should be given, not necessarily all the board members, but at least the board negotiators. So that when they bring it to the board, and I phrase the old guy like me asks the question, we want to be able to give out the answer. Well, in year two, it's going to cost us 200000 In year three, it's going to cost us 250000 And many people in this room have talked about a five-year plan. And we plan for the future. How can we plan for the future unless you have those kind of things? My second question is to Mr. Siegel. Do you anticipate there being a vote after we come out of the executive session that the public should be aware of? I don't know that. I don't. I don't think so. I don't expect it to be, but I don't know. Are you, you worried about the temperature in the room? I'm worried about my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think there would be a I can't anticipate it, but I don't know. I'm new at this. But I do have a follow-up to your question about that spreadsheet. We have that spreadsheet. I think we should probably clarify Mrs. Foster's question because I think there's some confusion when she asked you that question. I it sounded like what she said is what you thought she said was let's look at say step two for example. What is step two going to cost us on the old contract versus the new contract? No, she the way was, that I heard that question. No, she was just asking what the total was. You gave us a bunch of hieroglyphics, yeah. uh, percentages up, step two, five, slash, whatever. Yeah. All we wanted was some numbers to tell us what the total contract was going to cost us in year one, two, and so on, and what okay. the total contract was. Okay, we'll so, have that. We'll have that. Right. You gave us a fantastic hieroglyphic lesson in percentages and steps and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sorry, I don't understand that. All I'm looking at is the dollar amount. Okay. I'll have that for you. Anything else? Yes, sir. I, I know I'm not nice one anymore, and uh, I'm not really sure where my opinion lies at all, but I do appreciate that the uh, dress code was looked at, because that was something that the you know, city council has been bombarded with. So, like, you know, I just appreciate that one for sourcing out for that. Anything else? So then, so then we need um, we need a motion to enter executive session, and um, Brian has a um, Brian has requested a specific personnel, and I have to talk about a specific well a negotiate, a contract negotiation. Okay, so those two items. Okay. And the second? So we go through my notes down the hall. No, one, one second. I had to write this down. Do you anticipate needing a vote on anything that you need to discuss? No. So no. then there's not one I will not be any business effort. That's all. Okay, so then Brian? Yes. And then Carol? Yes. And then um, there was that I'll say yes. Yeah, absolutely. Good night, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank